Albert Einstein once said this, I have reached an age when if someone tells me to wear socks, I don't have to. He's fast becoming my favorite human quote machine. I'm Ken Boone, and this is my podcast, Much More to Say. This show is sponsored by the Descant Music and Media Group, creators and producers of podcasts covering a wide range of subjects. Our shows are hosted on Spreaker and available on Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Spotify. Now, on with the show. Today marks three years since I received my very first Social Security monthly benefit. Back in the day, when they were mailing out checks, you'd have to call your local Social Security office to make an appointment, pray that someone would pick up the phone, and hope you didn't have to wait an eternity for the first available opening. You would bring a stack of documents with you to prove you are who you say you are, and if you are eligible to receive the benefits you've worked most of your adult life to get. After all that, you'd get a a determination letter telling you what your monthly benefit is and when you would receive that benefit. Now, after a few clicks and keystrokes, you get a quick notification by email and from the U.S. Postal Service. The only mystery for me was which Wednesday in the month my benefit would hit my bank account via direct deposit. Applying for my pension was an even easier process. All it took was a couple of friendly phone calls and filling out some online forms. On July 1st, 2020, after a two-week processing period, my monthly pension magically showed up in that same bank account. The end of my life as an employee didn't go smoothly. I've talked about it in the past on a number of podcast episodes and even more blog posts. In fact, you could say I was obsessed about that. But why not once again for old time's sake? Not counting my work for Pete and his record label, I had a freelance gig with a local nonprofit that provided services for businesses trying to comply with the Americans with Disability Act. While I applauded their work, it was something that just wasn't in my wheelhouse. Now, the bulk of my duties at that nonprofit was the production of podcasts for the organization. I was contracted to provide 24 episodes in a one-year period. Things were going fairly well until two catastrophes hit within a matter of weeks. The first was me being hit with congestive heart failure, which led to my hospitalization. The second and most disastrous was the COVID pandemic. The medical providers at Atrium University City Hospital and Sanger Heart and Vascular did a phenomenal job of reversing my CHF. My friends, family, and even a number of strangers sent up a lot of prayers that also helped a great deal. And I did my part by following doctor's orders of medication, diet, and exercise. Dealing with COVID was more challenging, not just for me, but for the nonprofit I was working for at the time. As their main funding source got shaky, my client got a little desperate. They realized that they could be easily replaced by virtual means, such as the podcast I was producing. 
to stay relevant, the nonprofit swooped in and began micromanaging me, telling me what to do, when, and how to do it. They never did that in the past. They also were getting a little sketchy on the deliverable schedule, even though we had a signed agreement in place. Maybe they thought that I'd be so grateful I had a piece of a job that I would just go along with the shenanigans. Or maybe I would just quit. And they would get to keep the funding earmarked for podcasting for themselves. While I found their behavior deplorable, I could understand their actions. I even considered it some sort of karma payment for past wrongs I committed. That's why I didn't put up a fight. Celia and I ran the numbers and determined that we'd be positioned better financially if I just retired. And that's exactly what I did. Now, I didn't terminate my contract in a huff. I simply wrote a polite but formal letter to the executive director letting her know that I would stop providing services to them effective June 30th, 2020. I then spent the last few weeks doing the tasks that I felt like doing while submitting timesheets with zero recorded hours. In other words, I was doing it for free. As I've said in the past, I didn't get a resentment against a nonprofit. Instead, I express my sincere gratitude for all they've done to prepare me for this next chapter in my life. They gave me my break into the world of podcasting. I created a number of episodes for them that are still available on the internet. And they were paying me in the process. Who can hate on that? Not me. From July 1st, 2020 until now, I've been enjoying life as a retiree. That's not to say that I'm sitting around doing nothing. In fact, I'm probably busier now than I've ever been. And I'm enjoying myself much more to boot. In addition to my social security and pension benefits, my Medicare benefits also provide me with a pretty good quality of life. With zero copays on all my medications and $25 copay to see my cardiologist and throw in free gym membership, I'm living well on the cheap. And that was one of my New Year's resolutions for 2023. As for the nonprofit I worked for before I retired, I'm glad to announce that they seem to be doing just fine. Seems like they picked up more funding, allowing them to hire more people and expanding the services they offer. For some reason, I'm still on their mailing list, which allows me to keep abreast of what they're doing. And that's okay. Just the other day, I got a LinkedIn request to connect with these guys. Now, while flattered that I'm being asked, I ignored the request, not out of anger, but because I don't wish to give them any more of my time or space in my brain. I choose to wish them well and root for them from afar. It's much safer that way. A quote for today is from music legend David Bowie. Aging is an extraordinary process where you become the person you always should have been. Until next time, this is Ken Boone. Thanks for listening. We invite you to visit our website, muchmoretosay.weebly.com. That's much more than number two, say.weebly.com. While you're there, be sure to check out our brand new blog by clicking the DMMG blog tab located at the top of the homepage where you will find audio, video, post, essays, and the latest news and notes. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. Our podcasts are hosted on Spreaker. 
Episodes can also be found on Apple Podcast, iHeartRadio, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Podcast, and every other podcast directory on the internet. So like, comment, share, and join the conversation. This has been a production of the Descant MMG Podcast Network.